progressive realization of human rights to water, adequate uh, sanitation, and food security under Article 43 B, C, and D. The Ministry therefore implements programs and projects to ensure this mandate is realized and international obligations like SDG and Africa Agenda 2063 targets are met. Honorable Chair, Kenya has low service level as only 2.6 million households out of 12.5 million households in the country have access to pipe to water systems in their yards while safely managed sanitation is at only 32%. The investment required to meet the constitutional requirements of universal access to water and sanitation is very high and estimated at 1.8 trillion Kenya shillings according to the National Water Master Plan of 2017 and Kenya shillings 995 billion according to the Kenya National Water and San Sanitation Investment and Financing Plan that is now SIP, developed in 2022. The NAWASIP is an investment and financing plan developed by the national and county governments. The framework for the investment and financing plan was entered into between the national and county governments in January 2022, and the plan was launched by the Minister of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation and the Council of Governors in February 2023. Honorable Chair, the plan identified sources of investment in the sector as 40% concessional loan, that 1% PPP, 8% commercial funding, 11% national and county revenue, 8% grants, and 2% self-financing. While the sector has embraced self-financing, grants, national and county revenue, commercial funding, and concessional loans, the sector has not embraced PPP funding model. Through the NAWASIP, the sector has commenced negotiation with the World Bank to finance Kenya Water, Sanitation and Hygiene, commonly known as KWASH program, and the PPP funding program, uh, model. In this regard, the government targets to implement 100 large dams through PPP financing model. However, Chair, the current Water Act 2016 Section 93 provides for public-private partnership as a funding option to benefit only the water services providers who are utilities in the counties. The major national infrastructure development institutions like National Water Harvesting and Storage Authority and waterworks development agencies do not have the capacity. The Act therefore requires amendment to embrace public-private partnership model of funding for the relevant national water sector institutions. In this regard, Honorable Chair, I take this opportunity to appreciate all the members of the Standing Committee on Land, Environment and Natural Resources for inviting me and my team to discuss the Water Amendment Bill 2023. This bill was conceived after consultation with the PPP unit of National Treasury and Attorney General's Office to align the Water Act number 43 of 2016 and onboard the PPP funding option to the water sector. The proposed amendments on our chair hearing include section 2 of the Act on interpretations provisions which have since defined contracting authority in the water sector by lifting the definition from PPP Act 2021 and placing it in the Water Act 2016. Another important definition introduced as an amendment in the Water Act 2016 is the water service provider, which now means a company, agency, authority, state corporation, public benefits organization, or any other person providing water services under and in accordance with the licensed with a license issued by the regulatory board for the service areas defined by the license. The other important provisions in the Water Act 2016 that have since been proposed for amendments include Section 32, 68, 68A, 69, 72, 93, 
and 100, details of which are in your position, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, the main purpose for the proposed amendment is to encourage investors to undertake public-private partnership in water projects by making the relevant water sector institutions bankable. The proposed amendments enable WASREP to set tariff for bulk water and to license the waterworks development agencies to supply water in bulk to utilities. This would guarantee investment return. Honorable Chair, I assure you that the proposed water amendments to onboard public-private partnerships were developed by the Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation together with the relevant water sector institutions, National Treasury and Office of the Attorney, of the Attorney General. The amendments have further been subjected to countrywide public participation. The evidence of public participation is uh, with me and it, it is provided. Honorable Chair, this is an effort by my ministry to support the implementation of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda by bringing on board a public-private partnership funding framework, particularly for large capital projects in the water sector. As you are aware, His Excellency the President, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, since ascending to leadership of Kenya, has always emphasized that the government will upscale investment in sustainable water-related infrastructure, which will ensure that the country is water secure to save lives and improve people's health. In his very first state of the nation address to both houses of the parliament, sometimes in December 2022, His Excellency emphasized the need for a public-private partnership funding uh, framework, particularly for large capital projects in the water sector. Honorable Chair and members, Kenya is classified as one of the water scarce countries with per capita annual renewal fresh water of 452 cubic meters per person per year. And this means that a lot of efforts are required in terms of funding from relevant resources to ensure quality and adequate water is served on the 50 million citizens. We must plan to bridge the financing gap and address diminishing water resources. It is predicted that by 2035, there will only be 235 cubic meters per person per year. The construction of large dam is therefore a key priority for the ministry and national government. Honorable Chair and members, I have an obligation to ascertain predictable and improved sanitation coverage and access to safe water in adequate quantities. I therefore urge you to support my ministry provide your expertise, comments, and guidance to finalize this critical amendment which shall enable our country to position itself to effectively benefit from public-private partnership funding option. I submit to our chair.